What the heck are you wearing? What are you wearing today? Diabetes. Seriously, I don't know how I keep messing this up. Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. Once again, I recorded an entire video while having OBS focusing on my camera instead of my screen, so I'm gonna give this another shot. Before we get into today's lesson, I'd like to take a moment for some housekeeping. Last week, the channel reached 10,000 subscribers. I know you've heard me say this before, but seriously, thank you to everyone who has made this channel what it is today. If you look under the hood, you'll see that the channel was originally started sometime around maybe 2008. I used it as a personal channel, didn't really share anything publicly. At some point during COVID, I converted the channel to Let's Talk About Reaper, and apparently people liked it. So here we are just a little over two years later with over 10,000 subscribers, and you have all made this possible. Again, thank you so much. Now if you're new to the channel, or if you've been watching for a while and just haven't clicked the subscribe button, you guys know I see the statistics at YouTube Studio. Consider clicking subscribe today. Now let's get to the lesson. Recently a friend messaged me because he was having some trouble with some DI tracks he was sent. He found that if he panned his tracks one way or the other, he couldn't hear them anymore. He sent me the tracks and I loaded them into Reaper but couldn't reproduce the same problem. Well, I could with a whole lot of finagling, but I just couldn't figure out how he simply had that problem by just dropping the tracks into Reaper. I was experimenting with the tracks a bit later and finally discovered why he was having the problem. Let's take a look. I've got a blank project open and I'm simply going to take the tracks that he sent me and drag them into Reaper. When I release the mouse, I'm presented with a dialog asking me if I'd like for these to be on separate tracks or on a single track. I don't want the tracks to be one right after the other, so I'll choose separate tracks. And from this vantage point, everything looks mostly normal. The tracks are DI, so they're not going to sound great, but let's hit play and see what happens. Now they seem to be playing just fine, but you may notice that one of them seems to be isolated to the left and one seems to be isolated to the right. Given that the tracks are called guitar left and guitar right, that might seem normal. But let's solo the first track and adjust our pan knob while it's playing and see what happens. Now you may have noticed that while I had the track centered, I got sound on the left side. When I panned to the left, I had sound on the left side. And when I pan to the right, I got nothing. Let's recenter that track and switch to the second track. I'll solo that and perform the same test. The second track performed in the same way except inverse. We had sound on the right, unless we pan to the left, at which point we had nothing. What I discovered was the reason that I didn't have this problem initially when I was testing is that I choose a different default pan mode in Reaper. If I take a look at the pan knob on track number two, I'll right click that, and you can see that our pan mode is set to stereo balance. It's also called mono pan. With this mode, essentially what you're doing is controlling the balance between the left and right sides of a track. But a guitar is a mono signal, right? This should just work, right? Maybe not. Let's find out why. We'll get out of this dialog, and let's expand this track a bit so we can see. The first thing that sticks out to me on this track is the fact that my waveform is not in the center like I'm used to. I can see that I've got a waveform at the bottom and a line across the top. This suggests to me that this is actually a stereo track with no audio information on the left channel and plenty on the right channel. One of the great benefits about Reaper is the fact that a track is a track is a track. There's no such thing as a stereo track, a mono track, a video track, an aux track, or a MIDI track. As the playhead crosses over media in Reaper, Reaper simply interprets what it is and plays it back. With that concept in mind, if I have stereo, mono, video, and MIDI information all on the same track, Reaper will simply play back the media without complaint. I don't know of any other DAW that uses this method of processing, but maybe they should. My best guess is that whomever sent him these DI tracks accidentally exported the guitar tracks as stereo. But rest assured, Reaper has a way to deal with this. I can highlight the media item and press F2 to open up the media item properties. Another method of accessing the media item properties is to double click the item. If we take a look at the middle section that's labeled as Take Properties, you'll notice a channel dialog at the bottom that's currently set to Normal. Clicking Normal reveals additional channel modes that I can use on this media item. This one in particular, again, has audio on the right side but nothing on the left. So I'll change this to Mono Right and Apply. And now we've got the much more familiar audio in the center. We'll click OK to get out of this dialog and do the same thing on the top track. I'll double click the item. And in this track, we've got audio on the left, but nothing on the right. So I'll do the same process again, except this time I'll choose Mono Left and Apply. Click OK. And if I expand this track, we can see that both of these look normal now. So with my second track still in solo, I should be able to pan left to right and hear the sound move from left to right, as expected. 
You may also notice that now with the channels corrected for this media item, when the pan knob is centered, the audio actually plays in the center. Earlier I mentioned pan mode and how I didn't have the problem initially. If I right click the pan knob and go back to pan mode, what I like to use for my default is stereo pan. This way I have a stereo width knob and a pan knob. So now that this mode is enabled for track number two, I'll go back into the media item properties, go to channel, and change it back to normal and apply. Now, even though this is a stereo track with no information on the left side, it should behave in the same way. One minor difference that you may have noticed is with the pan centered, I'm still only getting the audio on the right side. My primary reason for using this type of pan mode is for working with buses. For example, I like for my drums to be about 80 to 90% width. That way my guitars can be on the extreme left and right side and not interfere with the drums too much. If you happen to like this pan mode and want to use it as the default in all of your projects, it's pretty easy to do. We'll go to File and Project Settings, then take a look under the Advanced tab. For Pan Mode, we'll change that from the default to Stereo Pan, and then choose Save as Default Project Settings. From that point forward, any new project will use Stereo Pan as the default pan mode. Regardless of which default you choose, you can still override at the individual level for any track, and of course you can correct channels on the media item if a media item was sent incorrectly. So as you can see, Reaper provides you with plenty of tools to get your work done regardless of how the files are sent to you. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee, I Like Coffee, Diabetes, Patreon, or Super Thanks links below. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time. All right, I think I actually got the screen recorded that time. I need to go change my pajamas.